What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Nuclear Barbarians. It is I, your nuclear barbarian, Emmett Penny, and I am here with the Canadian Conqueror, the Maple Leaf Kid, Chris Kiefer, the doctor of decouple. What is going on, my man? You've just dropped a sick ass report, and we're going to talk about it. Hell yeah. I guess, you know, I'm trying not to swear on my podcast, but I think uh, it's free. You're allowed to hear down it. in America. Fuck yeah. yeah. All right, I just cool. <laughs> I just interviewed Colin McClellan uh, from Digital Wildcatters, and he was dropping f bombs throughout. Left, right, so, and center. Yeah, right on. yeah, yeah. Well, listen, man. I mean, the only thing you missed from that introduction, in addition to being a nuke bro, I am a can dude, um, and <laughs> I think that's what we're what we're going to be chatting about today. But yeah, man, all is very well in uh, in the Great White North. Uh, it's a pleasure to be back. Yeah, man. Uh, it's a it's a pleasure to have you here. And um, okay, so. This thing has been in the works forever. I was reading through it this morning. I read through the executive summary. I was going on it, going through it. Um, it is wildly impressive. I'm going to pull up the title of it now. By the way, everybody, you can check it out in the show notes. Um, I highly recommend. It also just looks good. Oh, yeah. um, it is the case for Cantu. Why Ontario's homegrown nuclear technology is the province's best option in a time of rising electricity demand. So... Tell me about how this thing came to be. Like, what was the need for this report? What What did you guys want to focus on? Just give me the rundown there. All right. Well, first off, um, I have to give mad props to Dylan Moon. Uh, you know, D without Dylan, this report would not exist. Um, Canadian Nuclear Energy is a amazing organization. Um, I am a mere front man. All right. Like, I, I got some tactics, strategy, diplomatic skills for sure. I've got my skill set. Sure. Um, I do not have Dylan's skill set, which is absolutely incredible. And, you know, the rest of our group, amazing, like incredible analysts. You know, we have some inc like just like uh, what am I trying to say here? Like overqualified people within this group. Mm, mm. Uh, um, you know, we keep bringing in more. It's incredible. You know, uh, shout out to Doomberg as well. I just had a guy get in touch with me because he he's, he found my work on Doomberg. Um, nice. So we're bringing in like just the caliber of people. And that's what shines through in the report. Um, so you have, you know, both the kind of editorial line, which I was very involved with, you have, mm -hmm. um, you know, the incredible writing, uh, layout, research, um, you know, Python skills, whatever, to create this report. And then we have this outstanding network of, of experts that we consult with. And uh, what you get is, is the magic that hopefully your guests are going to look at. It's easy to find www.c4ne.ca will take you there. Um, enjoy. Um, I forget what your question was. I just needed to get the <laughs> yeah, so, out of the way. Uh, why'd you write it, bro? Like, why'd you guys get yeah. behind this? What need is it fulfilling? Tell me a little bit about the background right. of this bad boy. Well, I think I think you got to know the background of the organization. And it was founded three short years ago, um, part of the Stand Up for Nuclear movement. They got us inspired and, and moving. And, you know, that's that's like a, you know, one day event once a year. Um, mm -hmm. and we did that. It was like a folding table illegally put up in, uh, you know, the biggest square in, in Toronto had oh, some yeah. homemade pamphlets, like my graphic design, not up to Dylan's quality. <laughs> um, and we were just talking with whatever locals were walking by. Right. You know, mm -hmm. and, and the people that hang out in that square, you know, there's a lot of, a lot of schizophrenics, a lot of homeless, whatever. I mean, mm -hmm. all power to everybody, but like, um, you know, it's, it's, uh, just grown like wildfire, uh, big mm -hmm. in, uh, in roads federally i've been you know i i don't take money for it so i don't have to register as a lobbyist so i say i've been advocating federal level um, mm -hmm. in and out of ottawa numerous times um kind of tossing a grenade into the divide that exists within the, the federal liberal party mm -hmm. or the governing party between this kind of um you know the leadership that frankly has been captured by elite environmentalists who work in the prime minister's office and several ministries and you know, Ontario is this like electoral hotbed as well, like a huge number of the seats are, and that's where nuclear is at. And a lot of folks who represent those those ridings know uh, the benefits of nuclear to the tax base, et cetera, but also how job rich it is, et cetera. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, big moves there. And then, you know, our first big report, again, massive shout outs to Dylan, that magic recipe of, you know, the vision slash the researchers and, you know, the man that can pull it off, do some of the research as well, but get it all down in, on paper, Dylan Moon, Dylan Moon, Dylan Moon. Um, we got the safe Pickering report out, uh, you know, put that feather in the cap of, uh, yeah. I think as like a nuclear advocate, once once you've like saved a nuclear plant or been involved in it, it's it's deeply satisfying. Oh, for sure. And yeah, we were, we were casting around for, you know, what's the next thing? I think the, the work is, the work is endless. Um, 
And so, you know, Canada and Ontario are, are very interesting, very uniquely positioned. Um, and having this, you know, heterodox outsider's view that's completely unconstrained by, uh, frankly, the North Korean-esque comms um, strategies of, of the industry, um, where it's all mm-hmm. about, you know, this is the party line, you will tote it, step on a line, we'll fire. I mean, right, I'm being right, inflammatory right. here, but I figure nuclear barbarians is the place to do it. That's right. Um, Right. So being liberated from all of that, I, I was looking around, you know, I'm very passionate about, you know, nuclear renaissance. I'm deluded enough to still kind of hope for some global mesmer plan, or at least an Ontario mesmer plan, or mm-hmm. really just what we did. I mean, it wasn't only the French. We commissioned 22 reactors in 22 years in Canada, mostly in Ontario, biggest clean energy infrastructure, mega project. And we've got some big hydro dams, a lot to be proud mm-hmm. of there. So, you know, in, in uh, seeking out, um, you know, those heady days and recreating them, I I look around and I'm like, you know, we got a lot of good stuff going on here. A lot of the preconditions that can allow this because, you know, I read Bent Fleeberg's book recently, how to get big things done. And it's Mm -hmm. all about how like 99% of mega projects go out of schedule over budget, or don't actually meet the need that they were built for in the first place. Um, so, you know, things like wind and solar are low risk construction projects. It's actually what yeah. the, this guy advocates, which I think he's a little confused about the value proposition. But yeah, I mean, import a Chinese solar panel, put it on a little metal frame. You're not going to go over budget or ahead of schedule, but you get, yep. you know, as BF Randall says, you get garbage power out the back end. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, building nuclear is hella hard. It requires, a, and this is what's inspiring to, you know, the pro-humanists out there, mm-hmm. Um you know, it levels everybody up. And once people are leveled up, once their institutions are leveled up, once everybody's individual skills are leveled up, uh, the project manager level up, that's when nuclear is unleashed. And again, we've done it over and over again, you know, country to country. Um, And uh, we did it in Ontario and we can do it again. And and the preconditions are there and I'll, I'll stop, uh, stop. No, uh, Yeah. So one of those preconditions that I think is really important that you bring up in the report is uh, refurbishing uh, Bruce Power's uh, Pickering reactor, which yeah. will require basically restoring the supply chains, if I understand it uh, correctly. So walk through that as like this important precondition and what that sure. brings to this effort. Absolutely. I'll make a tiny correction there. OPG owns all the nuclear assets. Bruce runs the Bruce station. Pickering. OP, gotcha. OPG runs uh, Pickering and, and Darlington, but whatever. Um yeah, so um, this is the big thing, and it's not stuff happening in the future. Like right now, we're refurbishing several units at um, Darlington and at Bruce. So, and we finished a couple. Um, we have been ahead of schedule and on budget, which is again like this is unheard of, not just in terms of nuclear mega projects in the West in the last you know twenty thirty years, forty years maybe. Mm-hmm. This is. Um, in a in a you know decadent western world where airports <laughs> you know railroads i don't know if we build railroads anymore bridges hydro yeah. dams everything's going crazy right the kind of project management skills that opg and bruce have demonstrated absolutely extraordinary right and again speaking to that level of human excellence it's been cultivated it's been safeguarded and we have an active nuclear industry because of these refurbishments each of them are three billion dollar mega projects in their own right i mean you look at the diagrams of all of the components that need to feed into the critical path in order to you know deliver the mission it's insane emmett it's absolutely insane so um you know, that is, that is, you know, t- talking about preconditions, we have an active, skilled, ready to go nuclear industry, which is proving itself right now. Um, and it's not a big leap to go from refurbishing canvas, which you think about like gutting a home and, mm. and redoing it. That's a lot of work. Like in some yeah. cases, just building a new home, um, not to make big category errors and, you know, false comparisons, but like, you, you can kind of see what's there. Like, you know, you're, the cool thing about Candus, like unlike, uh, you know, the, the pressurized water reactor designs, the big, um, uh, you know, big pressure vessel designs, once that's pooched, it's pooched. With a Candu, our core is modular and you can fully replace the core, um, mm-hmm. making making Candus. I don't know, we could probably refurbish them more than once, but, you know, 80 year assets, who knows, maybe 120 year assets, um, you know, grandfather's axe, you can you can replace everything, basically. So, um, you know, very, very cool asset. And and that's what, you know, our refurbishment programs are doing. Um, we're going to end up doing uh, 18 of the 20 reactors here in Ontario, which maintains, you know, our ultra low carbon grid, mm-hmm. you know, the the candy reactor slayed coal in Ontario. Uh, that was 25% of our grid nuclear provided 90% of the juice to replace that. Um, 
so yeah, I mean, uh, a really important legacy here. But the issue is that, you know, you've talked before about, um, uh, God, what what was that phrase used in terms of the wind and solar uh, supporting the Democrats, gas supporting the Republicans, and wind and solar and gas? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, basically uh, that, that their interest group, it's all interest group stuff, right? Yeah. Like, you know, yeah, you had a better word for it. I, I'm blanking on it at the moment, which is killing me, but, um, there's no kind of natural advocate for, for can do, um, mm. and, and looking at, you know, this, this incredible, you know, the set of preconditions, which again, also include the fact that we convinced the federal government to do a total U-turn on nuclear provincial government is all in on nuclear. Um, you know, we've got, we've got all the human factors and we have demand that's key, right? Mm. No one's going to finance a mega project like a nuclear plant if they're we're not sure there's a customer for the kilowatt hours at the back end, you know. So those are those are what I'd say are like the big preconditions. But we have a bit of a shambles where um, there's not a sort of cohesive model. There's no one championing the can do. There's tons of you know, well, I shouldn't say tons, but there's enough venture capital in a number of you know st nuclear startups, maybe kind of you know uncharitably vaporware companies. Um, you know, and also, um, you know, again, I'm, I'm letting loose on barbarians here, yeah, yeah. Um, but also, uh, you know, uh, international reactor designs, we are going to be building the world's first, uh, grid scale SMR, the G Hitachi BWRX 300 mm -hmm. more power to them. That's awesome. We need, we need small, we need large, we need them all. Um, but you know, there's this huge neglect of, of can do. Um, and, uh, so we decided we needed to be the champions of that, um, as we were the champions of Pickering. Um, yeah. and again, it's, it's one of these things where it's an underdog struggle, but you know, someone's got to do it and, and we stepped into the fire. No, I think it's, it's also like almost spiritually important to, you know, uh, pull from, uh, this incredible success in Canada's industrial history, you know, sort of the ultimate canonical coal killer, uh, yeah. which I've, I reference like every chance I get, right. Because we talk <laughs> so much about. Uh, the French, but I'm like, you know, we should we should be talking about our North American neighbors in the Great White North, you know, and right. uh, what you guys have pulled off because that's that's really important. So let's talk about this rising demand thing, right? But you couldn't have released this report at a better time. Um, it came out what yesterday, officially. Uh, Wednesday, yeah, yeah. Wednesday, Is that yesterday. <laughs> it's yeah, been heady times, man. Basically, the same <clears throat> day, I think that the North American Electric Reliability Corp released its summer new summer seasonal assessment uh, that shows that the majority of the United States, like the majority, basically uh, all the way from California all the way to New England, and then Ontario are at elevated risk for capacity shortfalls uh, yeah. this summer season. So tell me a little bit about that story. I'm really familiar with what's going on in the U.S. Uh, to the extent that anybody can be familiar with our enormous sprawling internecine grid. But I don't know a lot about what's happening in Ontario and why you guys are so demand hungry for electricity. Uh, you know, I'm gonna I'm gonna answer that question. I'm gonna circle back a little bit to the coal slayer thing. You know, yeah, in the please. states, in the UK, there's been gratuitous slaughter of the coal plants without mm -hmm. a viable replacement, right? So, you know, you think about Germany, you know, shutting down 30% of its grid with its nukes, or Japan, you know, after Fukushima, knocking out 30% of the generation capacity. If you don't have something reliable that can fit in and replace the services of coal, remember Mark Nelson says you gotta put some respect on the name of coal yeah. if you want to replace it. Um, I think that's responsible for a lot of the capacity shortfalls in the U.S. Um, in Ontario, yes, we did shut down 25% of our generating capacity, um, but we, you know, brought back a number of reactors that have been mothballed. And in Ontario, there'd always been this relationship, like, we, why did we even go nuclear, right? This mm -hmm. is another precondition thing that I think is very interesting. Um, you know, the places that have gone gangbusters on nuclear are places, you know, not not all of these preconditions need to be there, but... Mm -hmm. You know, one example would be, you know, your, your fossil fuel poor, right? right? France, we do not have oil, but we have ideas. Ontario, you know, actually some of the very early oil fines were in Ontario, but, you know, we don't have coal. Um, so we were importing coal. It was, a, it was a bit of an energy security issue and there was all kinds of energy shock stuff happening in the 70s. And, you know, we had the, the world's second largest research center in nuclear uh, because during World War II, under threat of the Nazis, all the allied nuclear scientists came to Canada, and we had some of our own brilliant Canadians here as well. And that's that's what led to um, the creation of the pressurized heavy water reactor, the CANDU, uh, mm -hmm. which, which met the constraints that the Canadian economy had and still has, which is we don't have the ability to do heavy forging. Uh, mm -hmm. for your conventional big reactor pressure vessels and we don't enrich uranium <clears throat> mm -hmm. 
And there's a bit of a like a bullying relationship on who can enrich uranium. The nuclear suppliers group is, uh, you know, sure, they, yeah. keep, they keep people down. Um, and so, you know, we created this reactor that suits our needs. And what's remarkable about it is that means that the entire supply chain essentially is right here. So, you know, and we, have, we yeah. invest a buck in nuclear, we get a buck 40 back. And again, mm -hmm. as you know, nuclear um, job rich. And like, we're talking about the legacy, you know, high paying blue collar jobs and up, right? I mean, you need all, you need a mm -hmm. whole, a whole mm -hmm. army of people to run these things. So you're talking about six figure salaries to everyday people. You know, these are dignified, you know, middle class or upper middle class incomes. And what do we know about that spectrum of wealth? They recycle it. You know, the ultra rich, mm -hmm. sure, they're investing in stuff, but this is money that gets recycled in the economy. Um, so it's a win-win. But <clears throat> in terms of, you know, that demand issue, it's not because we gratuitously shut down coal plants without a viable replacement. It's because of organic growth. Um, you know, Canada is a country of immigrants. Uh, we continue to have, you know, really active immigration. Um, you know, Peter Zihan doesn't need to be too worried about Canada because we're really restoring our demographics, um, yeah. which is which is good. Um but, you know, we have about 4 million households in Ontario. We're going to be adding a million, a million point five more households, which so is residential demand is going up. Um, the whole Western world has done a bit of a whoopsie on, uh, you know, gangbusters globalization, where we've offshored not only a bunch of our, you know, foundational manufacturing, but also a lot mm. of, um, how should we put this, strategic um, industries, and we're bringing those home. Um, so there's a big manufacturing boom. The the governing party um, is, you know, Ontario is open for business. They're bringing a lot of manufacturing back, which fled after the 2008 um, economic crisis, partially because of skyrocketing um, electricity prices, because we did mm. a whole sort of, uh, we tried to be like Germany. We, uh, we've spent 60, or we will have spent $60 billion um, on, on renewables. And yeah, in a, in, a, in a province of about 12 million. It's incredible. Man, that is wild. Um, <clears throat> so we're adding, you know, because of organic demand. And, you know, I'm always skeptical of the idealist new folks who are saying, you know, climate is going to spur us to, you know, spend billions on nuclear plant. It, it, it's not, mm -hmm. that's not how it happens. You know, climate concerns lead to, um, you know, pork barrel politics and some subsidies we sprinkle on our, our friends to do mm -hmm. low risk, cheap garbage energy projects frankly, yeah. um, they're not, they don't lead to visionary, um, you know, like, I don't know, like projects like new deal scale, scale, like TVA type projects like that, that comes out of something else. And, and so <clears throat> we're forecasting, you know, demand, organic demand growth for manufacturing from other causes of around six to seven to eight gigawatts, which is enough for 10 large candy reactors to, to satisfy, mm -hmm. you know, the, the decarbonization plan for Ontario, the formal decarbonization plan calls for 18 gigawatts of new nuclear. So about 25 large candy reactors. Um, so, um, you know, but even without the climate imperative, um, the, the, the capacity imperatives there, and that's what politicians make decisions on. You bring in all these factories back to Ontario. You don't want them coming offline for the summer because we had a heat wave and needed some air con. Yeah, no, exactly. I mean, I'm really resonating with everything that you're saying. You know, right now, the EPA is trying to put through some new rules that will basically continue to take the side to coal in the US. Uh, at the same time, we're trying to do this big EV thing. And also, we're going to start, in some places, pivoting away from natural gas for heating or cooking. So that means electrification. Um, and it will also get rid of like something like 30 something percent, maybe like a quarter of, uh, gas plants leaving like 77% of our gas fleet, uh, intact. Right. So that's all, that's a lot of peaker plants basically. And, mm -hmm. you know, some people said like, well, look, the case for nuclear just got better. I was like, first of all, it did not. The case for sub 300 megawatt peaker plants just became amazing. <laughs> right? Like that's what yeah. happened there. Like, yeah. you know, people are going to be making a lot of 299 megawatt beaker plants uh, <laughs> to make that money. So this isn't, uh, this isn't the way forward. Making other energy harder to build other base load energy isn't necessarily the key. Yeah. yeah. At least in America for bringing nuclear on. I think you're right to point out that like, I mean, I've been skeptical of the climate narrative of this big inspiring thing to that. I think it will definitely bring people to the table for nuclear, but I think in terms of getting policy done as an interest, it's too abstract to codify into a project where people are actually putting their money up. 
in yeah. a significant way. Like people aren't going to take the risk uh, without something like organic growth, organic yeah. demand increase, or or demand deprivation. Right. Yeah. Like you yeah. just supply deprivation. I mean, you just don't have enough and you need more. Uh, that, that is like the number one precondition. And then as we yeah, said, you know, you, you uh, have no to fossil it. fuels, fuel security, uh, energy yeah. security. Those those are the other ones. Yeah. Yeah. One thing you said struck me um, and that was about, uh, you know, Canadian prowess with high technology, you know, the can do, you know, one of our top 10 engineering achievements, mm -hmm. um, you know, and again, it's extraordinary. There's probably been five commercially viable reactor designs pressurized water reactor, boiling water reactor, um, you know, the gas graphite reactors in the UK, which are, you know, they're, they've gone the way of the Dodo and the RBMK, yeah. which has also gone the way of the Dodo. So that leaves you three viable. I don't know why I'm doing this gang. Yeah, there here, we go. Nice. Three, is it Germans do this? <laughs> and yeah, anyway, yeah. that leaves you with three viable, you know, reactor technologies that have endured and proven themselves and Canada, like a nation, I don't know, it was probably a nation of 15 million when we designed the thing, mm -hmm. a nation of like 35 million now, like that is ex extraordinary achievement. You know, because we're a small country, um, you know, our high technology, like even the fact that we were able to do exports is incredible. You know, being mm -hmm. bullied, you know, by our beautiful brother nation in the in the South and kind of locked it, like Japan was going to build a whole bunch of candus, but, you know, the U.S. said, mm, no, we don't think so, right? Um, <laughs> you know, but Korea Korea did, China did, Romania did, Argentina did. Um, I'm, I'm missing a few others, I'm sure. Another incredible accomplishment. But what that requires and what our report is trying to galvanize is, you know, cross-sectoral support, federal government, provincial government, crown corporations or state-owned enterprises, essentially, um, labor, um, the supply chain, everybody needs to work together to, to actually have a Canadian high technology that can succeed. And we've got lots of examples of, of those that have failed, despite being, again, like the best in the world. Um, you know, the Avro Arrow was a fighter interceptor um, developed by Canada. It was basically universally regarded as the best uh, of its in class uh, mm -hmm. that project was canceled and i mean there's some controversy because we are moving more to like a you know missile interception defense yeah. paradigm and less uh you know delivery of nuclear bombs by you know big soviet high aircraft uh you know high high altitude bombers um so there's there's a few factors there but one that that i think really is unambiguous is the c-series uh jet made by bombardier and basically, you know, there's a big move away from building these jumbo jet, 400 passenger, 500 passenger, two story, double decker Airbus or, you know, not Airbus, but you know what I mean? These, these huge yeah. uh, planes, jumbo jets, um, that model quickly fizzled. And we're back to the, you know, hundred to 200 seat uh, agile planes that can, you know, really deliver on what the market's calling for. And so, you know, the Boeing uh, Max uh, 8 fiasco was because Boeing was like shit like Airbus you know had a design a fuselage I think early 2000s mm -hmm. uh, that they they kind of put some more fuel efficient bigger engines on and so they had a, a decent model um, I mean this is fascinating but the Boeing Max 8 whole scandal was that they took a really old sort of fuselage concept um, you know wings everything and we're like we're behind on competing with Airbus uh, what do we do in a scramble and so they just put really big heavy engines on it which tipped the balance of the aircraft and they had to put the <laughs> MCAS system in to make it nosedive if that started to happen and they were idiots and whatever you know we know the results <laughs> I mean, tragic tragic air accidents and then you have this little Canadian company Bombardier um, I think around 2008 2010 which comes up with like the best in class, most fuel efficient aircraft of of that size, the you know 150 to 200 seater narrow body a uh, jetliner, and it's it's you know blows away the competition. But you know Bombardier is not a massive company. Um, Boeing, um, it's kind of like Westinghouse and uh, and the Koreans right now. Boeing tries to throw a whole bunch of legal stuff at sure, Bombardier yeah, about yeah. this, right? Stalls its exports, etc. And uh, you know because. We didn't have that alignment of government, you know, industry, everything else. Um, it fizzles and we end up selling it off to Airbus for a steal. And now it's the Airbus 220. Yeah, right. So man. this is another example of Canadian excellence and high technology being the victim of us being a small country. If we don't, you know, all pull together, then our high technology falls flat. Yeah. And, yes. And we cannot let that happen with Candu. No, Candu cannot go the way of the BlackBerry. 
like that no, sir. you know no sir like that that <laughs> we can't let that happen i completely agree on this yeah. i am a canadian nationalist uh it must be <laughs> it must be protected at all costs so all right yeah. let me let me ask you another question right so i mean i get that it's been out for a day but whenever you do something you do it big Mm -hmm. word travels fast i've noticed this mm -hmm. about you and yeah. can canada, canada being a little bit smaller it can travel that much faster just you know we're about a day out what's the first 24 hours been like in terms of response oh it's been amazing uh, we got an exclusive in reuters um we, yeah we got some we got some great local Oof. media as well I mean, and just great stuff. Like none of this, like, oh, we need to throw in some anti-nuke whack jobs as balance. Right, um, right. Really just, really just <laughs> yeah. focusing on what the report said. I mean, we've, we kind of leaked the report early to um, industry, labor, um, supply chain, uh, government. And, uh, you know, the responses have been incredible. Um, mm -hmm. You know, and this is coming, you know, from very well positioned people, um, you know, who are saying this is, this is stellar stuff. Um, we had one of the companies, uh, you know, offer sort of like a proofread of all the sort of technical uh, mm -hmm. aspects of the report. And they came back and they were like, everything's perfect. Um, oh, that fuel <laughs> bundle image. It's kind of an older one from Pickering. So you might want to update that. But that was like the only criticism. So like that's awesome. The peer review was bomb. I guess. you're Yeah. And 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 uh, the reception's been been amazing on that side. And, you know, our, our, our target audience is really the provincial government. They plan. They do electricity planning. You know, there's obviously some elements for the federal government, um, and this is really directed as well at industry to try and galvanize that support because, you know, within the supply, like the supply chain is 100% can do right now. Mm -hmm. It's probably going to open up a little bit to the BWX 300, but that's a single 300 megawatt reactor. It's going to be, a, and it's not going to be, we're not going to capture the whole supply chain that we have with can do. And so to me, I'm like, why is the supply chain not rising up, Right. Um, and it's because they there's less of a voice um, at the top. And up until now, like the only company utility building was OPG. Um, they really were focusing on the small modular reactor market and the G Hitachi. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, so, you know, if there's not interest, no one's going to buy it. Then you kind of accept, well, let's just try and get in on second best or whatever we can. But sure. here's the hilarious thing. <clears throat> you know, there is this ready to go, like I mentioned, the Enhanced Can Do 6 um, approved after the AP 1000 by the Canadian regulator, Gen 3 plus amazing reactor. Um, you know, the utilities are kind of putting their nose up and saying it's not big enough. It's like, well, why, why are you building SMRs then if it's not big enough? Right? Like they want a gigawatt scale can do, um, which is, which is, you know, we have like a 900, 880 megawatt uh, can do, mm -hmm. but anyway, so it's, it's, it's just interesting. Um, the way the paradigm has shifted, like in my, my read of the SMR thing, like absolutely small jurisdictions, hundred percent, you can't put a big reactor on a tiny grid, mm -hmm. but you know, the, it's, it's a hype train that's 10 years old. Prior to that, we've always acknowledged economies of scale. And because of the power density of nuclear, we scale up to around a gigawatt, basically universally. Mm -hmm. Maybe we go a little higher and we run into some trouble with like EPRs or whatever. I'm, I'm not a sure. nuclear physicist. I, I won't, I won't go there, but you know, the rationale was. First off, we don't know if there's the demand there. We don't know if we'll have the customers for the kilowatt hours, so we can't go big. We can't do what we were used to doing. Second off, you know, after Fukushima, you know, the anti-nukes are winning. Nuclear is not cool. We need a rebrand, right? Small, modular, new, you know. Mm -hmm. And the third thing was, you know, we don't think that the government is ever going to finance nuclear again or de-risk it or, or, you know, issue mm -hmm. low, low interest bonds, green bonds for nuclear. Are you kidding me? Right. 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 And right. All of those things have changed. I'm probably missing a few. I love preconditions, but all, the, all these other factors have changed. And um, yeah, I mean, again, there's still a case for SMRs. I still am supportive of the BWX 300 being developed here in Ontario. Um, you know, it is a foreign reactor technology. It won't get as much as the supply chain, but like if there's anywhere in the world where you're going to pull it off and like do that as a service more to other like Estonia, mm -hmm. Poland, um, well, the U.S., the TVA is interested. Yeah, it's kind of a nice charitable thing for Canada to do to take on all the development risk of, of a foreign uh, IP and and do that. So you know, Canadians tend to be very charitable giving people. So <laughs> there you go, America. There you go, Thank Poland. You. There you go, Estonia. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but you know, and and you know, we're the best equipped to pull it off. So let's let's go in the West anyway. Um, but we got to focus on our own needs. There's a little bit of nativism here, I guess. And like mm -hmm. like I said, we've got like you know, 10, 10 large candle units worth of, of organic demand forecasted. Um, so let's, let's get serious. Let's utilize that supply chain that's ramped up, ready to go. All of that can do specific expertise. And I got to say, like, here's an example of, you know, learning by doing tacit knowledge, 
like getting off the blueprints and into the real world, like mm -hmm. our refurbishments are ahead of schedule. And it's because, you know, OPG built the $60 million mock-up. It's an exact replica of the can do the, the core the calandria and the pressure tubes, right. For workers to come and practice on, to develop specific tooling on, because we got to mm -hmm. take these big, long pressure tubes out and replace them. One thing that they discovered was, you know, I'm not, I'm not going to get too much detail, but the, like it's a double tube, essentially there's the pressure tube and the calandria tube and blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. Initially, they were taking the pressure tube out and then the calandria tube out. They figured out they could do both at once, right? Through some mm -hmm. ingenious retooling. That knocked off like months off of the project. Wow. And so we're dropping like, you know, I think it's around a billion dollars of cost between like the first refurb unit and the last, essentially, because of lessons learned. Um, That's awesome. You know, and, and like four or five months of schedule. And that means your reactor's back online four or five months earlier. It's pumping out terawatt hours of juice that are you know getting paid um so you know we're 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 an amazing place and like you know sometimes we uh because i think we've anticipated we've really had our finger on the pulse of where nuclear was going um and because we buck some of the comms and the sort of let's all get on the same message um or a bit risque that way like we've we've there's been some abrasion with certain players but like my hats off and respect to everybody, um, particularly OPG and Bruce, like just mm -hmm. killing it. Um, and, and like you gain this new, again, that Ben Flevebird book. Yeah. Wind and solar are easy construction projects. Right. But like, this is the, like, it kind of drives me nuts. And I used to be this way, like sort of, you know, um, nuclear is easy or just, we just need the political will. And it's like, it's a lot more complicated than that, man. Yeah. So, oh yeah. Mad oh, respect for just institutions. Like I remember when I started in healthcare, Right. I was like, thank God there's the middlemen and the bureaucrats because this place, mm -hmm. I couldn't do that. This place wouldn't run. And we all hate the bureaucrats and the fat middle, whatever else. I'm sure there's some <laughs> tweaks and stuff, but like institutions are of vital importance. Um, no, no, it, they absolutely it takes are. a village. Yeah. Yeah, it really does. And I mean, I think that this is super inspiring. I think, um, you know, it'll be interesting to see how the SMR th thing turns out uh, states wise, because I think part of the reason that, um, uh, Americans are going so big on it um, is first of all, there's just the whole Vogel's the elephant in the room. Nobody mm -hmm. wants to be that again, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. or even look like that. I think that that's, that's really part of it. And the other thing is, is that um, our electricity markets are so goofy yeah, that it seems, I think, theoretically easier to shrink nuclear to fit the markets yeah. And the, to retool the markets to benefit oh nuclear God. because yeah. they're so asset. No, no, to benefit and, society. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> to benefit right, society. Right, right. Let's be clear. Here. Right. Yeah, you know, um, and, and, and that's this whole other fight. You know, I think we have uh, we have multiple layers of um, institutions with poor incentives for nuclear in the yeah. United States. So it's really inspiring to see Ontario go this big and i hope that it will be something that we can start gesturing towards as yes. uh an example of how it can be done how it ought to be done um and that it will restore confidence in the lower section of north america um, and hey we're and, we're happy to export some candies uh you know hey i'd love some candies here you know <laughs> what i mean like i'm like i'm not uh we'll, we'll take your g hitachi and we'll uh we'll uh you know um raise you one can do yeah great <laughs> it's a poker let's game. do it you know i i think i think that that's what it's about so let me um let me ask you this question like what's how do you see this going forward for you and for the report and for the politicians like what are the next steps you're anticipating for the life of the information that you've just brought into the world well again i i kind of joke that um you know i'm gonna have to hang up my hat soon because we just we keep on winning uh, clearly there's, <laughs> there's a lot, a lot more to be won. Um, and you know, like, I, I think I was saying this to you before the podcast, right. But like, you know, an artist, a poet, you know, a scientist, like you grind, you grind for mm. years to develop the expertise in this case, you know, the relationships, the analysis, you know, the podcast, the couple has been incredible source mm -hmm. of information. So, um, you know, and that, that makes you more and more valuable and more and more frankly, powerful in terms of uh, shifting policy. And like, you know, our band of merry men and women, I kind of think of us as like privateers. Um, and we kind of jumped aboard the big nuclear ship. And, you know, mm -hmm. we turned the wheel a little bit um, in, a, in a common sense way that was good for the industry, good for society. Um, and that was towards the Pickering refurb. And I think we're steering it a little bit more now um, back into back into Candy where it should be. And like, listen, I, I don't want to say that 
um, you know, the industry is talking about this. It's not like, you know, I, I probably sound like an arrogant bastard to some people. I played, a, I think, a very important role and the organization has played a very important role. Um, but again, uh, I take it back to Milton Friedman. Um, great quote. Um, Only a crisis, real or imagined, results in change. Mm -hmm. uh, real change. The change that occurs depends on the ideas lying around. Mm -hmm. Um and you know when that when that crisis occurs, it, it it better be some good ideas. So our job is to steward, safeguard, develop, et cetera, those those arguments, so that when the crisis occurs, it's our ideas that are carried forward. Um, you know that's that's a a brilliant vision, and that's really you know what I credit us with doing. So it's not that like it's not that we're responsible for the fact that there's organic demand increase now, and all the right. preconditions are there, right. but we anticipated it. We saw it coming. We developed the arguments and like this is this uh, report, you know, it's being circulated. I know uh, several companies that are like using it, uh, like are intent to use it in terms of making the argument. Um, so that's that's incredibly gratifying. We have we have, uh, you know, treasured and safeguarded um, some really important ideas and given voice kind of to the voiceless, because, again, because of that dynamic, no utility was interested in buying can do yet to second for yet to settle for, you know, second best any any new build. Um mm -hmm. But of course, the whole supply chain was going like, we really like um, our factories that are tooled up to build can do steam generators and can do pressure tubes and, uh, you know, can do pumps and whatever else, mm -hmm. right? Can do widgets. Like, I, you know, our friend, Canada Mike, right? Yeah. Small no, machine absolutely. shop. Small machine shop, like a little, you know, I don't know. I, I got to go visit it, but like he's, he's banging out parts for can do like, yeah, I got to get him on the show there. now, actually. That's the yeah. whole, that's the whole, now that the report's out, you're moving that way. Yeah. Like, I don't want to like air his laundry, but I know that he was like, uh, these supply chains are looking weird for somebody who wants to build this stuff. So the fact that they're being restored is like yeah. super, super conducive to all of these small players you wouldn't even think of who are yeah. necessary to bring a project like this to bear. 100%. Yeah. Um, so look, I want to uh, wrap up here, but I want to sort of emphasize something. You're just like, I probably sound like an arrogant bastard. Like, let's put that to the side. Let's be done with that. I think it's important for us as nuclear advocates to understand that, yes, we don't make the world that we operate in. We mm -hmm. are not, you know, the directors of the grand play that is the society that we live in. But I think we should be honest when we are being successful. This industry and this movement has taken so many L's. We have had to apologize our whole way forward. And now we don't have to do that anymore, in part yeah. because people like you and the people that you work with are stepping up and racking up these dubs, right? I foresee a world where we don't have to apologize for nuclear at all. It will be mm -hmm. our opponents that have to start by apologizing for what they want first. So this yeah. isn't about arrogance. This is about success. This is about achievement. And this is about winning. You know, great advice from the one of the greatest arm wrestlers of all time <laughs> from Canada, <clears throat> Mr. Devin No Limits Larrett. He says, first of all, win. Whatever it is, win. That's it. And so that's what we're about. That's what's so inspiring about what you're doing. Again, people, check out Decouple. I'm sure the overlap here in the Venn diagram is like a circle. But if it's not, uh, yeah. get into those show notes and follow Chris. See what's up there. Do you have anything, any closing remarks before we say goodbye, Chris? No, I think I think I'm very satisfied. That's That's a really good wrap. Um, yeah, I mean, keep your eyes, uh, on, on, you know, for those in the U S north of the border, um, you know, as I mentioned, like, uh, you know, Doomberg, um, brought us a new great member. So if you're up in Canada and you want to get involved, get in touch, um, LinkedIn, <laughs> I'm like lurking on LinkedIn big time now, uh, yeah. but also at Dr. Underscore Kiefer, um, the website's super easy to remember www.c4 in the terms of the number sign ne.ca. Mm -hmm. Um, and also like people listening to nuclear barbarians, get you, if you're not already get your ass over to grid brief, sign up for that, subscribe that evangelize <laughs> Thank that. Thank you, brother. Thank you. No, brother. for sure, man. Like, and you know, if, if, uh, you're, you're on you and I think you have a YouTube channel, like I it do, makes yeah. a difference. It makes a difference. Cause I think there's a lot of people that are like, Oh, that's a really inspiring story. Um, you know, we need you like get behind mm -hmm. us, get in front of us, whatever you want, get beside us. Yeah. But as little as it's, it's little things, man, it's get on the Patreon, um, 
like that's how you can be active if if you if you can't you know yeah, sacrifice totally. your part of your job and do this like basically this hobby full time yeah dude time. no for real it is like it, it is a lot of hobbyists this is like i think that's the crazy thing about it right i was thinking about this the other day like i there are probably other things like this in the world right but like nuclear is seems very unique to me in that there is no budget and yeah. everybody keeps pulling this stuff off uh yeah. You know, like if we're especially in America, we're talking about billions flowing into the green movement, and mm -hmm. we're out here out maneuvering Goliath uh, yeah. on nothing but WhatsApp groups and like gumption. It is yeah. crazy. So yeah, yeah people uh, support T Couple. You're already supporting me. Thank you. Keep doing that. Uh, mm -hmm. Leave reviews, comments, whatever. Just help us rack that up. Uh, and yeah, get involved if you're a Canadian. See what's up with Canadians for nuclear energy. And, um, you know, I have people I can hook you up with stateside as well. No, so no, on that note, no. everybody stay sharp, stay, stay strong. Sharp, stay strong, stay radiant. That's right. Stay radiant, my friends. We will see you next time. <laughs>